So I was having a conversation with a dude and he is under the impression that compasses only work on a globe. So I'm sure there's maybe just a handful of people that think that, that makes sense, but I'll address some of the things this guy said. I invited him to come. His name is Philip Patterson or something. Seems the name Philip uh, comes up a lot in the troll community, but of course he won't show up. I don't think, but you never know. Um, so very simply, you know, he says a compass would only work on a globe. So if, <laughs> if, if you don't know somehow, compasses always face north, right? Well, if the earth is flat and the center of the earth is the north pole and all of the compasses face north, they're all facing center. Because basically his argument was you can start in one location and go east and you'll come back around. That proves the globe. No, that works on a circle that's flat also because your compass is facing north. So your east is relative to the north direction. So you will go around the north pole and start or finish back where you started. This He, he actually had the audacity to say that I was stupid because I didn't comprehend how a compass can't work on a flat earth. So yeah, that's retarded. And then although I know a lot of people aren't you know, religious or whatever. Um, he brought up he brought up the Bible. He said that the Bible says that the earth's a ball. And I was like, no, it doesn't. And he used Isaiah where he says it's a circle. I was like, why would you use that? Isaiah says the earth is a circle. And then a few verses later, he uses a totally different word to say ball. So it, it like, objectively that shows he wasn't trying to call the earth a ball because he used the word for ball just a few verses later. He even went as far as to try to say that they were the same word. They're objective, objectively not the same word. I've already done the study in it like a year ago. So look it up if you want to. I think it's like D-U-R, der, however you respond. I don't try to pronounce it in like Hebrew because I don't like to spit when I talk. But it's like der, D-U-R, and then I believe chug, basically, C-H-U-G, two different words. You can look at how they're used every single time in, in the Bible, and then you will see that they clearly have different connotations, one being a circle, one being a ball. He went as far as to say that a circle and a sphere are the same thing. N no, a circle has to go all the way around to become a sphere. So that took, what, one, two minutes and this guy thinks that I'm retarded. And also, I told him, he said, if maybe you just need to talk to some pilots so then you'll understand how the earth can't be flat. And I said, I work at an airport. I literally talk to pilots every day. I've literally met and spoken to online, typically, numerous different pilots that say they think the earth could be flat. He said, now we know you're lying because no pilots think the earth is flat. I talked to someone that was an Air Force pilot that said that the earth is flat. And these people always say, oh yeah, what's their name? Like I'm going to put all these people on blast and jeopardize their livelihood so I can win some petty conversation on Facebook with some trolls. No, they entrusted me to have the real conversation with me and I'm not going to put them on blast or that those type of people wouldn't reach out to me. So there you go. Um, he also said if you understand gravity, gravity has to be it has to be a sphere for gravity to work and i said gravity is nothing more than incoherent dielectric acceleration incoherent magnetism it literally in no way relies on a spherical earth in any way whatsoever at all it's dumb all it requires is an incoherent mass and then some another mass that's all that gravity requires the earth is giant mass of incoherent nature it's incoherent magnetic nature. Incoherent dielectric acceleration is when something falls to that incoherent mass that is the Earth. Very simple. The reason that they had to come up with gravity, because if you knew that's what it was called, then you would also know that... My friend says he's about to call. He does this every time he sees me go live and tries to troll me. Um, okay, so the reason they can't, they had to say gravity 
and they can't just call it what it is, which is incoherent dielectric acceleration, is because if you apply the provable, recreatable, replicatable, observable experiments to show incoherent dielectric acceleration or incoherent magnetism, if you have a the the bigger the mass becomes once you are you know compiling incoherent um, you know molecularly incoherent uh, bodies to create a bigger mass, it actually becomes less efficient, less strong. It has less of a pull because the incoherency level is increasing. So it obviously wouldn't cause spherical bodies to revolve around each other. That isn't how it would work. That's why they had to come up with gravity and then just say that's what gravity is doing even though we can't prove it or explain it. And then we have to apply the theory of relativity, which is a reification fallacy that gave a property to a privation. Right, and I always say it every time. If you need an example of what a privation is, a perfect example is a shadow. A shadow is nothing more than the absence of light. It has attributes. If you stand in the shadow, it's colder, but it doesn't have properties because it is nothing in and of itself. It is simply the priv is a privation, right? Like a shadow is a privation because it's an absence of light, so it can't have a property. Same thing with space. Space is a privation. So the theory of relativity attempted to attribute a property to a privation, being space, and giving it this this property of curved, curved space, warped space time, time a concept, space a privation. It's a reification fallacy. The theory of relativity, and of course that's why whenever we we found out through three different cosmic background radiation tests over the course of like 20 years that the the cosmic background radiation isn't consistent with heliocentrism or the theory of relativity. And also if you don't know, we had to come up with the concept, the conceptual abstraction, purely a concept, an abstract concept of dark matter, which is undefined, so that we could explain why the galaxies were rotating way too fast because they don't operate with Kepler's laws and the current gravitational waves imposed on the current universe. They only work locally in the solar system because they were crafted to explain this solar system. So, of course, they work. That is, once again, a reification fallacy of sorts. Okay, the technical application of reification fallacies is something that isn't real, something that is a concept or isn't actually tangible or real. You you give it certain, you treat it as if it's real. You argue for it and you use it being real as an explanation of it when it's actually not real. That's a reification fallacy. Okay, and there are different versions of this applied to the current solar system. So. The theory of relativity is literally impossible. It's literally impossible. And I know people think that I'm crazy because I say that because consensus uses the theory of relativity. But the reason the theory of relativity is required to explain all of the universe is because of the idea of subatomic particles. And they just had to come up with some way that the celestial bodies match this implementation of gravitational waves. And they had to use the idea of curved space. Again, space is a privation. It cannot have a property such as being curved. So... You know, we're on the more logical side here. People just assume that if you're a flat earther, you're stupid. But no, that's not what's happening. 95%, according to your religious leaders, that's what I call it. I call, if, you, if you swear up and down, you know the Earth's a globe and the heliocentric model's right, that's, that's a religion. It's a belief system. Now, you can say you disagree with me. That's cool, bro. But like to say that you know it, then you're then acting as if it is a religion. And you're suffering from cognitive dissonance. In order for the current model that you subscribe to to be real, the leading proponents of said model say that 95% or more of the universe has to be dark matter. What's dark ma matter, you ask? It's a conceptual abstraction. This is what they say. Dark means and signifies the fact that we don't know what it is and matter because everything in the universe has to be material. That's their assertion. It is, of course, inaccurate. Everything isn't material. That's where you get the electron from. They had to give materialistic properties to the immaterial. All electron actually is is the terminal end of one unit line of dielectric induction. So the dielectric induction has a break in it. They count that little break as an electron, and they give it a physical property as if it's this little, this little circular physical subatomic particle that's charge carrying so that they quantify it, and that has evolved into quantum mechanics, quantum physics, quantum science, quantum theories, quantum boom, all this nonsense, conceptual abstractions. You cannot material, or everything in the universe isn't material. It's very simple. Ether, for example, is immaterial. One thing you'll hear a lot of people say, if they even can get to this depth, of this conversation is they'll say, oh, well, if ether's real, then quantify it. If you can't quantify it, it's not real. That's It's literally retarded to say something like that. No, there are immaterial things in the world. You cannot quantify the immaterial. That does not thus equate, you can't equate that to meaning it's not real. 
Ether explains all observable phenomena. Your subatomic particles don't. Your theory of relativity doesn't. And so I'm on the more logical side. We are on the more logical side. Those of us that have reached this point, am I saying that all flat earthers know, know the extent of this conversation? No. For example, when people are asked about 9.8 meters per second squared, they typically always say, it's just density and buoyancy. They don't even know buoyancy kind of relies on the idea of gravity in and of itself, but that isn't a sufficient answer in entirety. Gravity is incoherent dielectric acceleration, incoherent magnetism. Everything in the universe is dielectric, not electric. Electricity is dielectricity plus magnetism equals electricity, the sum of each. Okay, so dielectric or electrostatic is what I mean when I say everything in the universe is electrical, and that's objective. Everything in the universe is dielectric or electrostatic. Everything. Everything. What about rubber, Austin? What about glass? Yes, everything. Everything in the universe is dielectric. Magnetism is nothing more than the dielectric field. Okay, dielectric acceleration, magnetism, right? The, the con current connotation of magnetism is so flooded down with misconceptions that it's hard to even use the word, but I'm on the objective side of things here, and I don't understand people, man. Do you all think that I just want to believe the earth is flat? I just want to believe the earth is flat, so I turn my head to evidence and, I'm, and I hope it's flat? No, it's a headache. People constantly attack you and act like you're stupid. And in order for you to substantiate the fact that you aren't stupid, you have to go on long rants like this to try to explain to them the depths in which you have researched to come to your stance. And they typically just brush it off. They'll, they'll cut you off. They don't even want to hear the explanation. And you're just wasting your time all the time. You're constantly being ridiculed and ostracized. There is no motivation for me to think the earth is flat other than me wanting to find the truth and not being scared to speak my mind even if I'm ostracized for it. So I'll never understand those people. They, act, they just think they're right because they have consensus on their side. That's what this guy said, Philip Patterson. He was like, you know, you're, well, I have the whole scientific community on my side. Oh, the same scientific community that can't explain the universe, they had to come up with a conceptual abstraction known as dark matter to, to occupy 95% of the universe. The, the same exact scientific consensus, the scientific community that brought you the idea that you evolved from apes with no tangible evidence of such a thing ever, no observable intermediate species in the history of mankind. Oh, the same scientific community that told you that everything came from nothing because they can't just admit divinity. They can't just concede the logical nature and the fact that there is some creating force. They can't acknowledge that. So they come up with complete nonsense, completely void of any reality. And somehow we're the crazy ones because we're humble enough to say, well, we don't know what the earth is. Current model clearly isn't right. It's got way too many discrepancies. We don't know the fact about exactly who God is or whatever. You know, you can be, you can acknowledge the metaphysical or spiritual without being religious necessarily. You know, and I try to keep these more informative or educational as a opposed to trying to like get religious but like creation is pretty obvious and if the earth is geocentric meaning the center of everything then creation is pretty undeniable and they're like why would they ever want to lie to you about the earth well there's all kinds of reasons and we can't even actually know all of the reasons but a very simple one is if you think you're a tiny speck of dust in this ever-expanding gigantic universe of pure happenstance where someone just throwed rolled the dice a million times and it happened to work out then you think you're insignificant and once you think you're insignificant and you don't actually grasp the magnitude of life itself you're much more malleable much more controllable they can lead you to believe certain things. They can lead the way that you act a certain way because you, it increases apathy. It increases nihilism, and it makes you more malleable. There's a perfect reason why they would lie to you. If there's more land than we know about, there's another reason that they would lie to you. There's all kinds of reasons that they would lie to you. You could go as simple as the fact that NASA gets $60 million a day. And all they give you is the ballpoint pen and CGI photos and lie to you to your face about global warming, which I've proven irrefutably they lied about global warming, which shows you that NASA is literally an agency that will falsify information and lie to you to, to feed an agenda. I didn't do that. Do you think I just woke up and was like, I hope NASA lies about global warming. I hope NASA's pictures of space are fake. I don't understand the logic in these people. I didn't do that. That's not – What? The whole way this started was I listened to B.O.B. He was dropping Elements mixtapes. He was talking about all kinds of conspiracies. He's like, this dude is, is talking about all kinds of stuff I've already researched. He's on point. Then he said the earth was flat. And I was like, wow, I can't even listen to you anymore. That's retarded. I looked into it just out of respect for every, the truth of everything else he had said. And then I found out 200 proofs of that of flat earth. I paused it. It was making me think of some things. And I was like, I'll just stop this right now and go look for pictures of the earth. And there aren't any real pictures of the earth. The only supposed real picture of the earth comes from the, the moon landing. And then you prove that the moon landing isn't real. And if you still think it's real, you should look into it. We did not go to the moon in 1969. We did not go to the moon. 
We did not go to the moon. And then once you figure out, well, if we didn't go to the moon, and that's the only real picture we have, that doesn't really make sense. And even if we did go to the moon, why don't we still have more pictures? It's 2020 now. It was like 2016, 15 at the time. I was like, why don't we have more pictures? We should have a live feed of Earth in entirety, not this little ISIS, small little GoPro lens, no star having nonsense. We should have full HD, 4K, 24-7 live feed of the Earth in entirety. At the least, we should have tons of pictures, tons of pictures. And under NASA's own mission, they're all composite images and recreations and CGI, and they have artists recreate them to match what the viewer expects it to look like. That's what one of their own contractors said. So then I was like, wow, maybe something's here, and I'll look into it. And now it's been a rabbit hole of four years or more where it's just a floodgate of discrepancies and lies and nonsensical assertions and conceptual abstractions. And you start to realize that science is no longer science. It's nothing more than mathematical theoretical nonsense and we have to just believe them it's all theoretical am i saying that quantum physicists are stupid no they're applying their intellect to la la land fairy tales nonsense it's very simple. And IQ it isn't everything. IQ doesn't test for nonlinear thought. It doesn't test for wisdom. It doesn't test for retroductive thinking. Okay? So, yeah, IQ is important when it comes to processing capability or linear interpretation. But it's not everything. And these people will probably have high IQs, I would assume. They're applying their intellect to false theoretical presumptions. So... Yeah, just unplug from the matrix or don't. It's your own prerogative. I don't I don't try to convince people to care about this. If you don't care, don't care. But I do it for the people that do care, you know, and I can't unplug you from the matrix. I can only tell you that you're plugged into the matrix. So I don't know what else to say. Um So very simple. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I just wanted to respond to this dude. I know you wouldn't get on, but yeah, of course, uh, Compass works on a flat Earth. If it's the middle, if the North Pole is the middle, obviously the Compass always faces there. You're going to be able to circumnavigate the same way. You know, someone was like, oh, explain the seasons. Well, I don't know the definitive model of the Earth. I cannot give you an entirety uh, or an ex explanation in entirety, but simply, if the sun has a revolution that gets closer and further away from the center, that would explain the seasons. The, these people just think that we're stupid, and, and there are very smart people on our side. In fact, we're on the more logical side, again, in conclusion, because ether explains all observable phenomena, which I say this almost every time I live because I don't think people really grasp the magnitude of this and how important it is. Ether explains all observable phenomena, subatomic particles do not. Those are the only two proposals in the history of mankind to explain the universe and understand how it works. Ether explains all observable phenomena. Subatomic particles do not. Quantum physics, the cult of subatomic particles and bombarding particles, they do not, but ether does. An example is if a laser goes through water or glass and it slows down. It's just a photon traveling and it slows down and then exits the medium and it speeds back up. That would break, breach the law of conservation of energy. But with ether, you know that light's just an ether perturbation. There is no subatomic particle called the photon traveling. So we don't have to come up with some fantastical explanation. Whenever they tested the laser in the uh, vacuum and not only did it work, it worked better than normal. They were confused because, of course, if it's a traveling particle, then it would be affected by the pressurized conditions of the vacuum. But it wasn't. But if, when you know ether's there, it's very simple. It's very simple. It's an ether perturbation. It doesn't it doesn't rely on the pressurized conditions of the vacuum. So, of course, it works. Ether explains all these things. Y'alls don't. For example, the leading proponents of your religion during that experiment literally had to come up with the conceptual abstraction known as quantum energy to explain it. They said the phrase squeezed pure nothingness. I don't have to come up with nonsense like that. So you think I'm crazy. You think I'm in the minority. You think I'm on the least logical side. And ironically, objectively, I'm on the more logical side because my side explains all observable phenomena. Ether, of course, is independent conversation of the shape of the earth. But it's just to put into to perspective how much of a religion these people have, they just bank on consensus for everything. And if you say the electron isn't real, they go crazy. But truth is, we're on the more logical side, objectively. So, yeah, that was just a brief, brief uh, recap of our conversation and what was wrong with it. And, yeah, like I always say, unplug from the matrix. I can't unplug you, but you can unplug yourself. I'm just trying to show you that you're plugged in. You know what I mean? It's... It's very simple. These things end up being, you know, abundantly clear once you open your mind. No one can open your mind for you, but it just is what it is. We're not just some crazy people. We're actually people that know more about your religion than you do, typically, and we're, we're devoting a lot of time in, to what we consider to be very important, and that's the nature of the very place that you live. No one can do this for you, but, you know, we're trying to wake you up. So anyway, love.